Uh, welcome to Moja Sports. Uh, this is a channel about athletics. It is meant to educate, entertain, and be also a channel for information. Uh, today, panelists, we have uh, Samin Yokoa and uh, Meshak Sang. Uh, coach Meshak Sang is a senior coach in Kenya. Uh, he can introduce himself and let him tell us a little bit about himself. Meshak. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Moja Sports, for having me. Today, I'm privileged to be part of this panel, and I'm really um, honored to have, to have Sami, Sami from Nakuru, uh, joining us. And uh, thank you, Coach uh, Ibrahim, sorry, Coach uh, Hamoud in the UK. And uh, it's such a privilege for the athletes in this country to be in such a platform and follow through some of the discussions that happen here. Yes, my name is Mishak Sang, as you have heard, uh, a former international track athlete, uh, a published author on the eyes of an athlete, a book about uh, tactical ways to overcome barriers in athletics performance. These are some of the things that challenge many athletes in this country and even the rest of the world. Uh, apart from that, I am uh, one of the mm, I am one of the highly published researchers uh, in collaboration on Nature Paper, the American Journal of Human Biology, and uh, PLOS One. We have done a lot of research uh, in collaboration with professors from Harvard University, Glasgow University, Brighton University, and Moe University in Kenya. Uh, our main focus in these uh, studies has been the performance of a uh, Kenyan athlete, and also we look at the health, uh, the health, the health of uh, of, of, of our children, or rather the health of the children who go to school. In fact, the publication that uh, I mentioned on the American Journal on Human Biology was specifically on the fitness, the fitness gram, or rather uh, how flexible are children in the villages and those that live in towns. And we try to look at all these studies in the hope that we can come up with ways that can help in fighting lifestyle related diseases and ailments. Um, as we as we as we go on, as uh, as as Amuda said, I am a coach and a very passionate one. And I know that uh, there are so many athletes who are looking for coaches out there. If you are looking for a coach who has uh, the ability to transform you within two to three months, then you have him. Meshak Sang is here, and I'm always available to answer any questions uh, from any athletes anywhere in the world. So thank you very much, Coach Hamoud, and welcome, Sami. Feel at home. Okay, that was a, a very good introduction. Now, Sami is currently an, an elite athlete with a PB of 61.45 for half marathon. He, has also, he also runs the marathon with a PB of 2 minutes 14.05. The major races, We'll just talk about his major, you know, a highlight of his performances. Uh, in 2015, Sami was the winner of Sari Half with a time of 102.41, that's in the UK. In the same year, he also took part in the Hastings Half, which is very local to me. These are races that I know I have been there. Uh, he was a winner again with a time of 105.27. In the same year, 2015, uh, Sami took part in, in the St. Dennis Half Marathon, and he was placed second. Moving to the marathon, he took part in Warsaw Marathon in Poland. That was in 2016. He was placed fourth. And he took part in 2018. He took part in Barcelona Marathon, where he was actually a pacer and continued on to finish seventh with a time of 214.51. And in the same year, in 2018, he took part in the Tours Marathon in France, where he was placed third in a time of two hours, 18 minutes, point zero seven. So that is Sami Nyokae, who is an elite Kenyan runner. So our discussion today uh, let's start with Sami. I mean, tell us something about yourself, Sami. Who is Sami? 
we want to know a little bit about yourself. Okay, thank you for the opportunity that you have given me today. Uh, Coach Idris, Coach Meshak, I'm grateful uh, to have a talk on most issues that are affecting us. First of all, my names are Sami Nyokae. I was born in Nyamira County uh, and raised up in Nakuru. That's where I started my, uh, my athletic career when I was in uh, secondary school. Then after secondary school, I went, to, I went back to Nyamira at a place called Keroka where we had a training camp. That is when I started now knowing and exploring my talent in athletics. So far, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm still uh, doing my best in order to improve my results. Uh, was there anything that encouraged you uh, to get into athletics in the first place? Was there anything, a race you watched or someone you saw or what interest, what, what created the interest in you to run, in, to, to join athletics in the first place? Oh, uh, when, when I was in primary school, I was seeing uh, those who are in the upper classes going for the zonals, for the inter-schools, uh, inter-classes, they were really doing well. Then it came a time when I, I had an opportunity. You know, in remote areas, we had no TVs. So the telev when I came to watch uh, some, some news and some events that were being held in different, areas, different countries, I was looking some for good results. I was hearing uh, Paul Terragat has won a marathon. Paul Terragat has won cross country. No angeni. So, I was encouraged to hear sports news each and every day on KBC TV and KBC radio. So I, it kept on motivating more. So I won't say, even me, I want my name to be mentioned on the TV. I want my name to be heard somewhere. Then it came a time when my mother told me that even me, once I was an athlete, when we were in high school, in primary school, but I was not going to the national level since I was, I was small in size and from our region, politics, nobody was, was looking at the career, so I opted to quit. So if, uh, if you have a passion, then I can support you. That is how I came to athletics. Okay. As, as an elite athlete, with the current global pandemic of COVID-19. How has it affected your training? What effect had this COVID-19 had on your training as an elite athlete? Uh, as such as I had, it still affected my training. Uh, first of all, we had uh, my management had uh, lined up uh, as from March and April. Uh, came. You're you are, you are breaking up, Sami. Sorry? You are, you are gone. You are, you are breaking up. Okay, go. Okay, this pandemic, since it started, uh, it has really affected my training. My management had uh, organized me as lined up so many races that I was preparing to. But when the pandemic came, now I had race, many of the races that uh, had been planned had to be canceled. And then I had to watch how, what am I going to do? I had to lower my training. So I had no morale of training. Then after that, you know, the little that I had saved in my account, I have to go for races to make some money. So it has really affected a lot. Then again, group training. I'm not training in a group. 
put them like before. You can motivate one another, you can help one another in speed work, in long run. But now, due to this pandemic, I am training alone. Everything is alone. You see, those, those things are the ones that has made training very, very, uh, very difficult. So economically, it has really affected me. And in, in terms of group training, uh, it has affected me. And now as the source of income only for me, it has really done a lot of, a lot of damage to me and many athletes out there in the world. Yeah, okay, thank you. Meshak, Coach Meshak, do you think how did the COVID-19, the current uh, global pandemic affected uh, probably your athletes and generally, or in terms of family settings, athletes, training groups, can you add on to anything what you think have been the effect of this global pandemic? Um, I, I think the interruption, <clears throat> I think the interruption of uh, income is the biggest uh, interrupt the the biggest challenge to the athletes that we have at the moment. Uh, it affects, uh, it has affected the the flow of income, and also in training matters, it's affecting the the, the, the psychological preparedness of these athletes. Uh, the physical part of them, I doubt if uh, they are affected because uh, the pandemic has not stopped anyone from running, from going out to run. Uh, many athletes have been receiving training programs. Uh, through emails from their coaches, some through WhatsApp, uh, and even sometimes they are written programs for a month or two. So nothing stops them from running. And they always say uh, an athlete who can train alone is the most talented one. So many athletes should have actually used this opportunity to prove if they're actually gifted enough to train on their own. But I think the biggest impact, the biggest challenge has been the psychological effect and also the, the the interruption of the flow of income. Many athletes have been receiving some money, maybe three times, four times a month from their competitions. But when this happened, everything stopped, and it's a big uh, it's a big uh, impediment to the training and and, and planning of uh, athletics in this uh, in this country because of the the virus. Thank you, uh, Sami. Uh, let me ask you this one: uh, Do you have anything to motivate you now? Now that, I mean, there are plans about the resumption of sports in the country and all these things. You have something that's motivating you as an athlete. Yes. Uh, uh, I have a small chamber that I go for farming. That one is also motivating me for, like, after training, I can, I can look for the maze how they are doing. I can look for the, the poultry. I have some chickens, I, poultry farming. So that one keeps on, keeps me going. Then uh, also my my wife uh, has a small shop that we can, we assist each, each one for running that shop uh, for the rest of the day after training. I can, it, it really keeps me moving well. Yeah. Again, again, uh, I think as an athlete, if I had an injury, this is, this is the, the time for me to, to heal. I have a, for the time to train alone and monitor the injury such that when I come back, when the races come back, when the pandemic is over, the, the injury could be over and then I'll be good. That keeps me moving day in, day out. Okay, earlier today when we had a when we had a chat with you, you told me you have just come from your long run of 30k. Yes. Have you resumed your training, or are you looking forward to a race that you are preparing for? At the moment, I don't have any race I'm preparing for, but I had a slight injury. That is what I was testing. That am I? Uh, uh, that injury is it over? or uh, is the shape, is, is my shape somehow has dropped, or am I uh, weight? I have to manage my weight 
such things. Okay. Next one is for Sami. What challenge do, you, do Kenyan athletes face? What are the challenges of the Kenyan athlete? I mean, in every country or in every continent, athletes have different challenges. They don't have the same problems all the time. What do you think are the challenges of the Kenyan athlete, like yourself? Uh... I can categorize the challenges that we we face maybe uh, into two. We have the economic and the social, uh, even culture. So in terms in terms of those challenges, the economic you find if you can do uh, your research, you will find most of athletes they are from poor background. Maybe you can find a Sami, I'm a single parent. Uh, athlete. That's a challenge when I, I try to find maybe the the training gears. I want to join a certain camp. All these needs money, and you are not alone in the family. Maybe your parent has two to three uh, other children in the family. You find that now it it becomes very hard for that pa parent to support you. Uh, again, uh, support. like the case I have told you, you might find uh, I am from Kisi. Maybe you have got your relatives, your father, maybe your mother can tell you. Have you can you run and beat a uh, and beat a uh, Kalenji? Are you mad? Can you concentrate with uh, 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 learning? Education is the key. They will tell you that. So if you can ask your parent maybe to give you transport to go for competition, they can't. Even your relative, they can't. But when you shine, when you come out as a winner, everybody will surround you. They will say, hey, our, our child, our athlete, everybody, even the politician, they will surround you. See Why? You, have, you, you are now a winner. You have made yourself. You have money. What they're interested is all about money. But they can't support you. Again, uh, I think the best way to, to define this is to actually look at what is this that people call poverty. Yes. Because everyone says that uh, Kenyan athletes are from a poor background. Uh, nobody has ever come out to define what poverty is. Because these are some of the things I try to address in my book. That the barriers that we set you know, athletics performance is what actually uh, um, defines the kind of uh, levels that athletes can go. So if you say athletes are poor or they are from a poor background, can we define this poverty? Keeping in mind that uh, Sami he has gone through school, very expensive school, from primary to high school, to secondary school. Fees paid, uh, uniforms, good shoes, everything. Why should it be poverty? when it comes to uh, getting to prepare this, uh, this young person to be an elite athlete, or rather to go into a training camp to start training. So what is this poverty we are talking about? Because it could be the reason why Kenyan athletes shut down when such things happen, because they believe that they are poor. So if they are not getting what they are looking for as, a, as athletes, and then they believe that they'll not succeed in life because it's, it's a switch that has been switched off in their minds, that they are from a poor background. But to me, I have never seen anybody who has come out to define what poverty is in relation to running in Kenya. Uh, is it because <laughs> is it because uh, the parents of the athletes do not put a lot of value into athletics, and that is why probably they don't support it without having them being poor. They probably right. just think that athletics is not very important. Uh, Coach Meshak, yeah. they, they are, yes. Coach Meshak, uh, Sami mentioned uh, saying, you know, the parents say, can you beat Kalenjins in running? Probably Kalenjins could be the predominant running community in Kenya. I'm not sure. But we have had a lot of great <laughs> athletes. <laughs> it's, and they have, came, so it's a fallacy. It's a media yeah. frenzy that people put, uh, they try to make it look like it's a Kalenjin Nandi thing, like Keino, Kipchoge Keino, and the rest of the athletes that we have uh, before. 
now the Kisi, the Kikuyu, the Somali, the, you know, the Luya, the Luo came in later on to be, in fact, the best coaches that we have now are non-Kalenjins. The Kikuyus, Luyas, and um, by in the real Kisi, or Nandis, they are equally similar athletes. So, fallacy. It's a media creation. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because I, I, I know of some of some of very good athletes from the Kisi community in Kenya who have gone on to win in, international international medals in, 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 in various events. Yeah. That, Can that we continue your summit? Asking, yeah. Sorry, Coach Mesha. That's why we should be asking Sami if uh, the Nandis are being asked if they can run as good as the Kisi. Because people like Yobe Sondieki, uh, yeah. they, they were one of the best athletes in the world, surely. The 5,000 meter world record holder, the first man to run 5,000 in Oslo. And the managers were shocked. He's a Kisi. So why should we put in the minds of Kenyans or Kenyan young people want to get into running that you cannot run like the Nandi? Is it because of Kipkeno? We are very good athletes who are non-Kalenjins. David Rudisha is not a Kalenjin, he's not an Andy. And he was the first man to break the 800 meter world record. Um, Paul Ereng is not an Andy, is he? He's a Kisi. So we should be asking, can you run like a Kisi? So tell Mama that he should encourage his, his, his child, Sami, that you can yeah. beat the Nandi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can tell you I, what I can tell you is that since I started running, it is yes. only one day that my mom came to watch me running uh, in Afra in Afra Stadium once. Surprise! Unlike, uh, unlike the Nandi, the Nandi. Unlike the Nandi, you find yes. the the father, the mother, all the family members they come to cheer you at. Uh, Kipkeno Stadium at uh, Nyayo Stadium, they, they give you moral. They give you moral so support. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm saying we must remove that barrier from, yes, from yes, our parents yes. so that when they when they when their children say we want to run, they should be yes. encouraged and told you that you can't. Recently, I was asked if we feel pride to run against the Muzungus. I tell them, no, we are also equally worried like the Muzungus. When we look over our shoulders, uh, the yes. Muzungus are breathing and they want to beat us. So we must always free ourselves from this kind of uh, this kind of uh, scary tactics that the Nandis cannot be beaten. They can, and in fact, the most successful athletes are not Nandi. They are not Kalenjin. They are non-Kalenjins. So we need to talk to our parents and tell them that yes, our children can do it too. Yeah, let's let's continue with 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 Sami. Let's exhaust <laughs> the issue, the challenges, some of the other challenges that you face as a Kenyan athlete. That, that was a very valid and very interesting point that we have raised there. Let's, let's go on. Yes, uh, another point is ignorance or illiteracy. You, you, you see most of the athletes in Kenya, what I can say, uh, it is unfortunate that once you have discovered your talent, you can no longer continue with education. Once you join Team Kenya, you see now, what can coach tell me? I have money, I have something, I have a manager. You don't, uh, you don't want to see what is ahead of you after retirement, if you get injured. So I think that one also is a big problem we have. On, on that same point, we have what we call uh, pride. Once Sami has gone to Europe to run, there is nothing Coach Mesha can tell me. I know everything. <laughs> Once I have beaten somebody in a race, I come with that pride. I have money. My... <laughs> I come to finish. You, you know, that depends. With the... can, can I jump in, Coach? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, Mesha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, Sami, that depends, on, that depends on the relationship between the coach and the athlete. Yes. Uh, because uh, the way I prepare my athletes is they still need me even when they're rich. Even when they make a $70,000, $70, they'll still come back to me for advice and their guidance. So it depends on the relationship. So the coach and the athlete must have a proper solid relationship so that as they grow, they grow together. And it's not about the money. 
is about the value, the value system you instill, I instill in my athletes. So when they go out and they become successful, uh, money wise, they'll still come back to me uh, with specific needs, which are non related to money. So it's all about the relationship with the coach. Unfortunately, in Kenya, the coach does not spend time with the athletes. Uh, what they do is they focus on the on the winnings and the money that they are looking for. But as I always define character, I define I define the success of my athletes in terms of character. So the character of, that they come up with is what defines them, not the money and the success that they are making or times and winnings. Yeah, Coach Meshak, uh, I have interacted with a lot of other other Kenyan coaches, and the sentiment that uh, uh, Sami is raising, I'm, I've had this concern from a lot of other coaches saying, you know, athletes, once they go to Europe or win a certain race or get a certain amount of money, you know, they don't listen, they don't listen to the coaches and all this thing. And we shall explore on this in our future program. But let, let's let's continue for now. I, but keep I, in mind that it's okay to lose an athlete to Europe. The coaches who are watching this program should know that it's okay to lose an athlete to whoever is taking away is taking them away from them. It's okay. You can just let them go. It's like your children. Once they have grown, let them go. Don't hang on them. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Coach Meshak. Then again, we have what we, uh, I think, poor guidance. Like, like from my place, you find Sami has a training group, but uh, those, the, the coaches at the grassroots, maybe from the AK office in our region, there is nothing they can give you. They cannot guide you. They just wait for maybe some races, then they can come and say, now we have a race. That is all. But they cannot give you something that can guide an upcoming athlete to to show the way to go. Are you suggesting probably the AK have no coaches in in the area where you are? Don't they have an office? Do they have structure and coaches, or or what is it? I think it's uh, the poor structure. There's no proper structure. Okay. And uh, yeah, go on, go on, Sammy, go on. Uh, again, uh, we lack mentorship. Eight of them. I don't know who who it is, but I can hear some noisy background. Let's go. Let's continue, Sammy. Let's go. Uh, lack of mentorship. Okay. That is another challenge we have. Uh, Coach, Coach Meshak, the issue of mentorship. I mean, you have dwelled a lot on sports mentorship. You have written a lot and participated in a lot of sports mentorship. What do you think can we do to help? these athletes in terms of mentoring? Um, uh, AK, or rather Athletics Kenya, uh, has the sole responsibility to prepare coaches into mentors. They have that capability, they have the capacity, and all they need to do is to update their curriculums to include a mentorship program during their trainings, especially when they are preparing coaches there are many athletes who are trans transitioning from athletics to coaching. And I think if they can update their curriculum so that the coaches that graduate from their program, their coaching programs must be fully trained mentors. So if AK can step in to develop these curriculums, and like I said, they have the capacity, they have the ability to do that, then it's possible to have a pool of coaches all over the country who are trained mentors. Because it's not just about the stopwatch, and the whistle. They need to be fathers to these athletes because many of them leave their homes to be with them. And the closest people they can be with are the coaches. So I think AK has this challenge. So I challenge the AK to come up with training programs that are integrated fully 
to be sports mentors. Okay. Have you finished Sami with the challenges or do you have any more points to add in? Okay. The, last, the last challenge is a proper question. There's challenge. interference. Something is... Yeah. It's the rain. Okay. Raining. It's raining here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We can't stop the rain, but we will continue with <laughs> we'll continue with our conversation. Oh, no, you can hear let's me go, because of this. Let's go, Sami. That's nature. We can't control it. That's background music. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's continue, Sami. What did you say? I was saying lack of proper coaching. In Kenya, we lack we I we lack we lack like uh, from the area I'm coming from, uh, we have got no proper coaching. What we have, maybe sometimes you will find we have got, as Coach Meshak said, uh, I can categorize we have got maybe uh, dictatorship coaching. So in Kenya, I think we have most of them, uh, maybe 90%, I can say we have got dictatorship coaching. I think we can, I think AK should do something about coaching. <laughs> I mean, can you elaborate a little bit on when you say dictatorship coaching? I mean, uh, from my coaching, uh, when I look at how I was taught as a coach, uh, one of the qualities of a good coach is not to be a dictator. You are not just telling your athletes. You must be involving them in what you are doing. So. What is it that you think coaches in Kenya are dictators? They're, they're dictating without being a leaders or because as a coach, you are not just supposed to dictate. A dictator is you stand out there, you tell the athletes, 